everybody! It's been a while since I did a non-workout video and so I decided that today would be a good day to do that. Um, I'm just going to address some frequently asked questions that I have been getting. I'm part of a new uh, Facebook page for women's fitness and I asked some of the ladies on there to give me some good questions that they have. So a couple of my questions will be from there and a couple of the other questions will just be from emails that I've received. And if you ever do have a question, please email me at fitbyashley at yahoo.com and I will do my best to answer those for you. I do get questions sometimes that I don't know the answer to and if I don't know, I'll try to find out for you, but there are some questions that are just are completely out of my realm that I'm not going to attempt to answer because I'm not an expert necessarily in those things. I'm not an expert in anything, I don't think, but I do try to stick with the things that I know a little bit more about or that I have experience with. So the first question was asked by my friend Jennifer and it pertains to meal prep. And she says, if you're getting into meal prep, you know, you're excited about eating all this healthy food, you've got every, you got your food already, what are the main kitchen utensils or kitchen tools that you can't live without? And the first one for me is a food scale. This is the food scale that I use. I got it at Walmart. Um, it's the biggest loser brand. And I like it because uh, it does run off of batteries and the battery life seems to be really long. Um, I think I've had to change the battery one time and I've been using it for at least three years. I think it costs about 20 or $25 at Walmart and it has been well worth the money. It measures in ounces or grams, which is nice because um, sometimes you just need the different measurements. So that is the number one thing that I can't live without. Some people think it's crazy to weigh your food, but I guess I'm a little crazy. <laughs> I like to weigh everything. It just makes me know that I'm getting the right portion sizes. And on my meal plan for my trainer, everything is measured out in ounces. So if I didn't have that, I'm not a very good guesser. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I can guess a little bit better just visually, but I don't really like to do that. I'd rather just weigh it and know that it's right. The second thing is this steamer pot right here. It's got a pot inside of a pot, so it's got the pot that has the holes in it, and then it's got the pot that doesn't have holes in it. You just put the little holes in it down inside it, and then you put a little bit of water in the bottom. And then it does have this lid that goes on top, but I didn't have this for a long time. Steamer pots are kind of expensive and I just really didn't want to spend the money on it. So I was putting a strainer just inside of a regular pot and kind of covering it with foil. And it was just always such a mess and such a challenge. And so I went to Ikea one time and I found that when it was 40 or $50 and it has been so great for my vegetables. Um, I cook a few other things in it too, but mostly like uh, broccoli, green beans, um, I've done asparagus in it. Any of those things are so quick and easy whenever you have a steamer pot, so I highly recommend that. Another question that I get asked a lot is how I whiten my teeth. And I don't really feel like my teeth are as white as some people I see, but I do have people ask me what I use to whiten my teeth, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. Uh, I have really sensitive teeth and so it's hard for me to use the bleach that you get from the dentist that comes in the custom bleaching trays. I do have those, but my teeth are just so sensitive that I can't use it very often. And my friend Candace told me about this whitening toothpaste. It is the Crest 3D White. And I buy these at Walmart and I think it's like $12 for the set. And I use those every time I brush my teeth. You just you use the first step for a minute and then um, you use the second step for a minute. So you are brushing your teeth for two minutes, but it works great. I drink a lot of coffee and so my teeth do get stained and so that's what I use for that. The next question uh, does come from the Facebook page that I was telling you about, the women's fitness group. And um, the question is, what is the best indicator if you are working hard enough? Is it your heart rate, your muscle soreness, having to decrease the weights as you go along, or the amount of sweat that you have? And I think that's such a good question because intensity in your workouts is so important. A lot of people get hung up on how sore they get, and 
The fact of the matter is, yeah, you are going to get sore sometimes, but just because you're not getting sore doesn't mean that you aren't working hard. There are just different types of workouts that are going to make you more sore than other types. So for me personally, I have this Apple Watch. I used to have a Fitbit. I start a workout on my Apple Watch every time that I do cardio or weights, and I like to keep my heart rate above a certain level. And that's going to be different for everyone based on your age. Um, your heart, your max heart rate is going to be a little bit different. For me, I like to, during cardio, I like to have mine over 130. And during weights, I really like it when it's over about 110 and I'm 36. So um, that is a good indicator. But another good indicator is how challenged do you feel? So if you're doing if you're lifting weights and you're not feeling burn in your muscles or you're feeling like you could do a ton more sets or a ton more reps, then you're not going hard enough. Um, you're either not lifting heavy enough, uh, you're taking too many breaks in between sets. So you definitely want to feel like you couldn't do any more or like you couldn't push any harder. Um, that's a really good indicator of if you're working out hard enough. So those are kind of the things that I use. I, I go by heart rate and I go by just how I feel. If I'm completely exhausted at the end of a workout, I know that I couldn't possibly have done any more. That's how I know that it was a good workout. And um, that was a really good question. So thank you to my women's fitness group for asking that question. The last question that I want to talk about today is I've had a lot of women ask me, what the right kind of workout is. And this is such a good question too because there really is no right or wrong kind of workout. Who's to say that one type of working out is right and another type is wrong? Some people love yoga. Some people love doing workout DVDs. Some people love lifting weights. Some people love running. Some people love working out in ways where they don't feel like they're working out like kayaking or hiking, more of those recreational things. And all of those are good. Um, the main thing is that you have to choose something that you enjoy for one thing. And no, not all workouts that we do are going to be enjoyable. But basically, you need to find something that you don't hate um, and something that you don't dread. Because if you hate it or dread it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to stick with it. So you have to find something that fits well into your lifestyle, something that you can make the time for. Right now, I'm working out, during my competition prep, I'm working out three times a day. I've got two sessions of cardio and one session of weight training. That's not realistic for a lot of people, so that wouldn't be right for them. Um, it works for me at this point in time because I work at a gym, and I kind of design my schedule around it, but it, it hasn't always been that way for me. Um, so again, I'm personally not a runner. I hate running. It makes me unhappy. There are other people who love running, who actually find it to be therapeutic and who do get wonderful health benefits from it and who can see really great visible change in their bodies. So if running is something that you love, run. Um, I don't think that anybody should ever say that there's a right or a wrong. As long as you are following a couple of general rules, which would be intensity, like the last question that we talked about, as long as you're going hard enough, you're sweating, you're feeling challenged, that's very important in your workouts. And if you're trying to lose weight, the other rule is that you have to be in a calorie deficit. So as long as you're following those rules, just do whatever makes you happy or what you enjoy. And another thing is that we all have different body goals. I like building muscle, but some women don't want to have as much muscle as I have. They want to have more of um, like a thinner Victoria's Secret type body, and that's beautiful too. All of these different body types are great. But all of them are going to require different workouts to get there, and it's all in what you want. So don't let anybody tell you that the kind of workout that you're doing isn't right. As long as you're pushing yourself hard, and you're sweating, and you're feeling like you're really doing something, that's what's most important, and I cannot stress that enough. So um, just choose what you love. Just choose what works out the best for you. So that's all for today's Frequently Asked question session. And again, if you have questions um, about anything, whether it be fitness or hair or makeup or any of that fun stuff that you know I love, um, please ask me. Please email me, fitbyashley at yahoo.com, or you can message me on Facebook, 
or um, it just any way that you can get a hold of me. Send me your questions because I really want to do this at least one time a month. I hope that it helps everybody. I hope that you um, got something out of it or learned something. And I hope that you all have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you for watching.